Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias Antioch and Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Friday, February 23rd, 2024, and here are the readings for today. A reading from St. Peter's second Catholic letter, chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained a faith of equal standing with ours in the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promise, that through these you may escape from the corruption that is in the world because of passion and become partakers of the divine nature. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these things are yours and abound, They keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these things is blind and short-sighted and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be more zealous to confirm your call and election, for if you do this, you will never fall. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. Let us be attentive. At that time, as Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings. And Jesus said to him, Do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be, and what will be the sign when these things are all to be accomplished? And Jesus began to say to them, Take heed that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and they will lead many astray. And when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, Do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places, and there will be famines. This is but the beginning of the sufferings. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. In today's gospel, we've come just about right to the end. Mark 13 is the telling of what's going to happen to Jerusalem. And to understand the context a little bit better, there were a lot of apocalyptic expectations on the part of the religious community at the time, and the belief that the end of the world was going to be coming very soon. And so what would happen at the end of the world is that there would be great tribulations and great trials, and that basically all the things that were created by humanity would be destroyed. And so when the disciples are marveling at the beautiful buildings that are all around them, around the temple at the time, our Lord has the understanding that those things are not going to remain forever. But he does caution them that what's coming is not really predicted. We should take that same advice. I've heard so many people say, the end is coming. It's coming so soon. And, obviously, we live in times of great confusion and great turmoil. But let's be honest with ourselves. There are always times of great turmoil and great tribulation. There are always times when there is something happening, either locally or in the world, where one might begin to think, that God is coming back soon. And to be perfectly blunt, America has had that view of apocalyptic expectation since pretty much its inception. 
certainly by the time the 1800s become the 1900s, there are great expectations that the world is coming to an end soon. And of course, in the 20th century, we saw war in an unparalleled scale, destruction beyond imagination. And each time something like that happens, someone can begin to think, surely the end is nigh. But our Lord warns us that all of those things must take place, trials and tribulations, and things that cause suffering, those things are always going to be there. And one may wonder, indeed, if it's going to come to pass. But our Lord says, no, those are not the things that tell of what is coming in terms of the end. They're just signs. So what are we to make of them? At all times, we should be ready. It's a, it's a message that I give to people all the time. We should always be ready because we don't know if our end will come either on an individual scale or on a global scale. It's hard to tell. But all we know is that as long as we remain steadfast, as long as we continue to love God with that ferocious love that we're supposed to have, if we love him with our heart, mind, soul, and strength, as we've been saying this week, we love our neighbor as ourself, we will find ourselves prepared, sufficiently ready, that whatever may come, we will be prepared. What may come? Sufferings? We'd be ready. Joys? We'd be ready. Difficulties? We'd be ready. Tragedies? We'd be ready. Triumphs? We'd be ready. As long as we keep our foundation the way it's supposed to be, and as long as we keep our sights set firmly on God, nothing will come that will shake us off that foundation. Nothing will come that will cause us to be unprepared and unready. And so if it does come where our Lord decides to return in his triumph and glorious, triumphant and glorious second coming, then we'll be ready. If we pass away because of old age, we'll still be ready. And that's where we need to be. So practicing the virtues, loving God, praying, giving alms, being kind to our neighbors, worshiping God in spirit and in truth, worshiping him as best as we possibly can, loving our neighbors as best as we possibly can, all of these things are what put us into a position where indeed we are on good footing. So listening to the gospel today and all of the apocalyptic gospels that are found in all the synoptic gospels in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, as long as we hold on to the teachings of Christ and hold on to Christ himself with that great zeal and fervor, there is nothing that is going to come that will unsettle us or knock us off of that foundation. May it be so. And may God bless us on his way, in our way. And may God bless you and those that you love always. Thank you for joining me. You have a great day. And we'll see you tomorrow, God willing.